Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Amoroso, and I'm the uh, former founder and president of Electric Marketing, which is a 45-person Shopify Plus uh, customer experience and retention marketing agency. Uh, we leverage Gorgeous across most of our storefronts, if not all of them, in order to not only you know, automate customer service, but even you know drive additional revenue through the channel. And today I'm going to be walking us through the new automation add-on that Gorgeous just recently released and actually go through a case study as well of a brand that is leveraging it to you know, automate up to 30% of their tickets, and in this case, actually even more, and take off some of the burden from the customer service team. So what I'm gonna run through today is how to install the chat, how to build out quick response flows, how to build out order management flows, so things like where is my order. Uh, then I'm gonna dive into the flow builder, which is able to handle more complex logic and you can think of it sort of like a Klaviyo flow builder in terms of being able to segment people based off of the response and then prompt them with another question. Then from there, I'm gonna dive into some of the questions that you should be thinking about potentially implementing into these automated flows. I'll touch on how to build a help center within Gorgeous, how to create a contact form, and why you wanna create a contact form versus just having your email for support on the website. Then I'll touch on auto responses, and then I'm gonna dive into the analytics that you're gonna be able to have for the automation add-on, and specifically uh, the results that Todi, uh, which is Sofia Vergara's skincare brand, was able to generate uh, in just less than 60 days from the launch of the brand. So without further ado, let's dive in. First is the chat. So in Gorgeous, you're going to see uh, in settings, Underneath channels, you'll have email, chat, voice, and so on. Click on the chat, and you're gonna go ahead and click add chat. You'll give it a chat title, you'll select your platform type, connect a store, whether you want live chat messages or only offline messages, and then just click create and customize. Once you do that, you'll have something that looks like this, and there's a few things that you can do with the chat. First is you can create campaigns. So campaigns are going to you know, prompt a message based off of URL. And then you can also add conditions, like you know, what's the time that's been spent on page. So in the case of uh, Toady, when I go to the website, you see in the bottom right corner here that I get a prompt saying, hi there, let me know if you have any questions. And so this can help guide the user experience a little bit better, or the user journey a little bit more succinctly. Next, you have quick replies. So these are things when the customer opens the chat, they can select one of these quick responses. You're also able to modify the appearance as well. So add in your brand colors, like your main color, conversation color, what you want the font to be. Uh, you can even add in a company logo if you like. So if I wanted to add in you know, the Toady logo, I can go ahead and drop that in here. And then you'll see it in the circle here. Obviously this isn't sized correctly, but you can go ahead and add that. And then choose where you want the widget on the website. So in our case, we put it in the bottom right corner next to the accessibility icon. Next is preferences. So you can select you know, when is the live chat available. Uh, in this case, we selected when agents are available. Otherwise, it'll show uh, some of the quick response flows that we've built out. And you can leave your email in order for us to get back in touch with you at a later date email capture, autoresponder, and then forwarding chat replies to customer emails. Installing it is really easy. There's now a one-click installation for Shopify. So all you do is go ahead and click install. And once you click install, you choose where you want it to show, and that'll show up throughout your entire site. You can create separate chats if you like, but in this brand's particular case, uh, there's only one. Next is quick response flows. So this is put in place in order to help facilitate faster resolutions for customers, but also to reduce the number of tickets that your customer service team is having to deal with that can very easily be answered. And so you can display up to six in your chat widget. You can see here that we have four currently turned on and we've been able to, you know, aggregate some of these response or some of these questions over the first, you know, 30, 45 days of the brand being in market. And so questions like, are your SPF products mineral based? How do I create an account? How do I pick the right shade? 
all of these have been asked pretty frequently. And so we went ahead and put in these quick response flows so that, you know, customers can automatically service themselves or self-service. And then we're not, you know, we're not distracting the customer service team from issues that are uh, more significant. So in this case, I can go in here. I'm going to add in fake email. You can see here, I uh, get order status. Now I could do get replies by email. But if I go back, you can see all of the opportunities that I have to self-service. So are the SPF products mineral based? Are they vegan and cruelty free? How do I pick the right shade? I'll touch on the track and manage my orders. And then this question, which is built in the flow builder, but choose six. In this case, the brand is newer, so we don't have all six built out yet, but you're going to want to leverage all six opportunities that you have here with your most frequently asked questions. Yeah, because it's going to automate a lot of the customer service inquiries that you get. After quick response flows, you have what's called order management flows. So this allows customers to take actions depending on their order status just directly from the chat widget. So you can allow customers to view tracking information. And in this case, you have a response for unfulfilled orders. So if the order hasn't been fulfilled yet. This is the copy that will show up. It has not been packed and shipped yet. And then this usually takes 24 to 48 hours. You can allow customers to return orders. In this case, because we are leveraging loop returns, we don't have an auto response. So this will actually link them out to the return portal and they can self-service there as well, as long as the order was delivered less than 30 days ago, because that's our return policy, which is shown in some of the other flows as well. Next, you have cancel order. Canceling orders is very challenging for current 3PL, and so we have this one turned off. But if you want to allow customers to request cancellation, you can choose if the order status is still processing fulfillment, if it's unfulfilled or pending delivery, and then the response text based off of that order status. And then last is reporting an order issue. And then, you know, you can build out various scenarios as well. So the serial name being refunded issue options. I didn't get my refund. I'd like to reorder some items or other. All of these are able to facilitate self-service from the customer standpoint. So we've gone through quick response flows, order management flows. Highly recommend having both of those turned on. But then third is the flow builder. So the flow builder is reserved for more complex logic. And you can see that in uh, the chat here actually this can I start a return because I am getting a response back from customer support automatically with a question more than 30 days or 30 days or less because depending on you know when that order took place I may or may not be able to start a return so how do we go ahead and actually build this in the background or in the back end and you know, other use cases for this is if you have different shipping policies based off of region or, you know, you want to help maybe guide the customer to the right product, you can build out that logic here. It's very conversational. So now we are in the flow builder. And so I'm going to click on the return exchange policy that we set up, which we just looked at on the front end. And you can see here how the logic was built out. So we're prompting them with a multiple choice question. How many days has it been since you placed your last order? it's more than 30 days, the response is sorry, but we only provide free returns and exchanges within 30 days for US customers. If it's well, 30 days or less, it's we provide free returns and exchanges within 30 days for customers, you can initiate a return or exchange here. And then we link them out to the returns portal. And then the flow ends. But there's other use cases here, whether it's product recommendation, size guide, warranty policy, shipping policy, uh, subscription management. So I can use this template. How can we help you with your subscription? You know, change frequency, change products, update delivery details, change payment info, cancel subscription. Uh, you can continue to build out this logic. And I'll go ahead and show you here the options that you have. You can do multiple choice. You can collect a text reply. You can have a file upload. And then again, the automated answer. So 
it's pretty sophisticated in the way that you're able to build this out and then also help mitigate you know, some of the questions that are more frequent than others here. So beyond the flow builder, uh, there's a couple of questions that you should be asking yourself not beyond just what you're receiving from customers, because let's say you're a brand new brand, you're not going to be, you know, exactly sure what are your most frequent tickets. Some of the common ones are, how can I change my subscription? What's your shipping and return policy? Do you currently have any discount codes? How can I get a discount? You know, what's your loyalty program? If you have one, when are you expecting a restock on a particular item? So let's say you have a product that's out of stock, you could trigger a chat. And then the question would be, when are you expecting a restock? And you could provide a response there. Can I change or cancel my order? Should I pay any fees for a return? And then questions related to particular products. How do I pick the right size? Why the product is different from other products on the market? What type of ingredients do you use? You see that uh, is one of the ones that we built out here with, are the SPF products mineral based? How can I use your product? So. Those are just some examples of potential questions that you might want to leverage when building out your quick response flows or, you know, some of the logic for your flow builder. But another really great thing to do is just take a look at businesses within your industry and take a look at their FAQ page. And that can give you some inspiration for your brand. Now, if you have a historical backlog of uh, tickets and information, you should be able to aggregate what are the most common questions and then be able to uh, build them in here as well. Now, next is the help center. So I'm gonna go ahead here and go into underneath channels, the help center. Now you can create multiple help centers. I'm not going to build one here, but you can choose the email that you wanna integrate it with, the subdomain, what the help center name is, and then also connect it to a Shopify store. But we already have one built out. So let's hop into this here within your help center and you can see what it looks like on this screen this is essentially your main portal for customers to come and get support on anything so as opposed to like a traditional faq page you could have something like this you have the concept of categories so in this case we have a product category a returns category and orders and shipping category in an account category and then there's articles that live within each of them. And then there's actions customers can take at the very top, like track order, return order, cancel order, report issue. And then the ability to get support down here below. So chat with us or contact us. Now, within here, it's very easy to add categories and articles. Just click add category, add an image, put in your title, the description of it. And then within each of these categories, you can add articles. And so I would say air on the side of more rather than less. And then the other nice thing is within the support here, you're able to, you know, reference or provide some of the articles from the help center as responses. And so you're able to, you know, sort of push customers into this flow. The name of the game for all this is to reduce the amount of time that you are spending manually with your customers, but also providing them a better customer experience because these are instantaneous responses and you're able to point them in the right direction. So it's not as if we don't you know, care about these customers, we're actually able to provide them a better experience if we can automate and help them self-service so that they don't need to wait on a team member to be able to support them. You also are able to choose whether or not you have the contact form in there, whether you want to enable the chat widget, Again, my recommendation here is to you know, have more rather than less. And as usual with anything within Gorgeous, you can customize the appearance, change some of the preferences, and then also add in header elements. So if you want to include navigation links to like get back to the main site and things like that. And then you know, publish the help center, you can choose what subdomain it's on. Next is the contact form. So it's one thing to have the help center, but you know, a lot of customers just immediately go to that contact page on your website. But you don't wanna just list your support email there because if you have your support email there, you're going to be inundated with a bunch of spam, you know, random inquiries, things that aren't actually relevant. And so on your contact us page, what you're gonna do instead 
is go into Gorgeous, again under Channels, and create a contact form. Name it whatever you like, connect your store, and then within the contact form, you can choose to have particular subject lines, and then you can go ahead and actually get that published onto the website and drop it in with the embed code. Once a customer fills this out, this is where auto responses come in. So there's a lot of different automation features within Gorgeous. You already have the quick response flows, the order management flows, and the flow builder. Those are primarily live chat based, but you have auto responses as well. And so let's say the subject here is order status. Well, within Gorgeous, in rules, you can have the ability to create auto responses. So you see here some of the auto replies that are already set up, such as send tracking information email. So this will be sent automatically depending on what sort of message comes in. And these are the automated responses that will be sent. So as opposed to the customer service team having to reply to one of those email inquiries via the contact form, this will just get created automatically. And then you can click in here to see what are the affected tickets. So you can see that some have already been automatically serviced because they reached out about their order status. So again, this is an auto reply rule that's created by Gorgeous where it detects emails related to order status or tracking, but you can create your own rules. So whether it's auto responders or auto close, like we leverage a solution that allows us to uh, track social mentions on Instagram and that will create a ticket in Gorgeous, but it doesn't actually you know, need a response from any of our CS agents. And so we have an auto close where you can see here when the ticket is created, if the message body contains any of this or the ticket subject contains any of this, then we're just going to set the status as closed automatically and add a tag as well. So there's a lot that can be done within the rule builder, but in the case of, you know, how to automate responses to the customer, things like sending a tracking information email, cover your bases if they don't get to the live chat or they don't go to the help center and instead they're going to the contact form. So I'd highly recommend leveraging auto responses as well. Now, before I dive into uh, the analytics that are provided with the automation add-on and also the early and initial success that Toady has had, just a quick recap on what we've covered thus far and all the things that you're going to want to implement in order to automate. In some cases, I've seen even higher than 30%. But on average, you're going to be able to automate, you know, at least 30% of the tickets that you would traditionally have to answer via your customer service team. So not only does this reduce your first response time, but it also reduces your costs and you can focus on more important requests that are actually going to be meaningful for your uh, business and help drive additional revenue. So first we covered how to install the chat. The chat is such a focal point of the website that this is going to be in the eye of the customer very frequently and is the typically the first place that they'll go in order to get support. And so that's where we're building out the quick response flows, which you can see here. That's also where we're building out the order management flows, which when I click, you know, track and manage my orders, if I were to go ahead and add in my email, I just have to remember what I placed the order with. So I'll get a six digit code. And now I can manage my orders right from here. I can track it, I can report an issue. If I click report issue, I didn't get my refund. I'd like to reorder some items or other. All that can be managed within here within the chat. And then the flow builder. So you can't tell from the front end perspective whether it was built with the quick response flows or the flow builder, but really the big difference there is quick response flows are, you know, customer clicks one of these, auto response, that's it. Flow builder, customer clicks it, and then 
we prompt them with an additional question or questions in order to direct them to the right response. So can I start a return? How many days have been placed since I placed my order? Well, it's actually uh, been more than 30 days. So I'm going to click that and it's going to say, sorry, but we only provide free returns and exchanges within 30 days for us customers. So that is the main focus of the automation add on, but you're also able to add in other tactics to help mitigate the volume that you're having to manage manually in your, in your customer service team. One being the help center. So within gorgeous under channels, again, help center, this is where you'll build out all of your categories and all of your articles so that you can get a help center like this, which is your customer's sort of main stop for anything that they need support. This is going to be your main place for customers to be able to handle anything, one of those questions or otherwise, if they're not addressed by the chat that you have on your main website. And you're going to want to make sure that you link to this in your footer and potentially even in your header so that customers can easily see it and access it. And this is where you'll see the categories, but then also be able to dig into the actual articles that answer some of those questions as well. Next is making sure that you have a contact form on your website instead of having just an email that people can uh, reach out to. It'll get scraped, it'll be you know spammed relentlessly, and also it's easier to build out you know the rules associated with the auto responses that you can address automatically as well. So in terms of like the hierarchy, it basically goes you know the chat and some of those automation add-on features like the flow builder, then the help center, and then the contact form. And if they make it through the contact form. And it's still, you know, one of those questions that could have been resolved by, uh, like the flow builder, or the quick response flows, you can leverage rules and auto responses to be able to address them. So now that we've gone through all of that, let's actually take a look at the analytics. So in the dropdown in the top left corner, if you click it, you'll see statistics. So click on statistics, and then we're going to go down to the automation add on. There's a bunch of other you know, reports that we're not going to get into today, but we're going to look at what the automation tool has done for Toady in the last 30 days. Now, keep in mind, a completely new brand. So there's not a ton of historical data here, but you can see even in the last 28 days alone, compared to the 28 days prior, we've had 68 total interactions. Of those interactions, 86% of them have been resolved by add-on features. And you can see here the number of interactions that were automated. So the absolute number. So of the 68, 86 were handled by the automation tools, giving you 59. And only nine needed to be serviced by the agent. And you can see as well what the breakdown was. Was it flows? Was it quick response flows? Was it an article recommendation? Was it track order? Was it report and order issue? So you can get an understanding of, you know, what is the most effective. And then down here, you can see flow performance, your quick response flows performance. So things like what is your return policy? 52 of them were automated, but seven were not. So let's dig into these seven, see what they were, and then potentially look at ways to automate them. Article recommendation performance, top order issues reported and then products with the most issues and return requests. So, albeit relatively low volume, 59 tickets were able to be addressed by quick response flows. And let's say on average, it'll take at least 30 seconds, if not more, most likely closer to one to one minute and 30 seconds or even two minutes, even if it's just a where's my order because the agent has to reply, then they have to wait for a response, then you know, I have to reply again. And so we've been able to save in the last 28 days, 59 total interactions and self-service the customer so that they could get to their answer faster. So that is the automation add-on with Gorgeous. We've been rolling it out across all the clients that we work with to be able to produce results like this. And I'm looking forward to diving into it even deeper in terms of how it'll be able to increase revenue as well for the brands that I'm working with. Now, Gorgeous also has a really great offer that they're currently running where you get your second and third month free of the automation add-on. So if you're already on Gorgeous, it's definitely something that you'd want to take advantage of. 
All you have to do is sign up for a three month plan and you'll get two months of that free. And then on the, for the users that are not using gorgeous yet, there is an offer in order to get two extra months of the regular platform free. If you sign up for an annual plan. So a lot of great offers that are accompanied with this as well. And would highly recommend that whether you're using gorgeous and want to add the automation add on, we're not using gorgeous yet to take advantage of that now.